Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Kind of like talking to you guys about a lot of these topics because we no longer live in a physical world. We live more in a spiritual world. So, meaning, if you're just out here about doing things without thinking, like, you know, you're gonna go, you're gonna reap those benefits, reap, reap basically those consequences more faster. But in the sense where we live in a more spiritual world, is that you gotta understand yourself, you gotta kind of understand the environment you're in and the bigger environment that's being enforced maybe the bigger environment is being enforced on you and how that has a total play on you aka your little solar spirit signature and this little bigger pond of just signatures basically all right but on this episode i want to talk about kind of shadow games or shadow games what do i mean by shadow games a lot of us already kind of play shadow games and we don't realize it right we're kind of playing a shadow game right now but no one is losing in this hence hence i'm giving you hopefully information and hopefully all you're going to need is just your time and energy which again gives you something period but um like hopefully if you guys take what take away what you take away you get knowledge if you don't then it's all good it's like win win or lose there's, there's not really a loser or winner here but um shadow games we play a lot of shadow games, meaning like play video games, even these like VR games and all these different type of things. All these count as uh, shadow games. And especially a better way to explain it too would be tarot cards. Those tarot cards, those are shadow games also. But also a lot of these, like just just playing cards, just good good old fashioned playing cards. Like, you know, when you're just playing Big Two with your friends or Fish or War or whatever, those are like easy shadow games you guys get into every single time you guys play. And then other forms of shadow game too would be like Yu Gi Oh, Pokemon, uh, Magic Gathering, all of other types of things. So, now that I kind of showed you what shadow games are, or kind of told you what shadow games are and how we kind of deal with them on the daily, like, what is the point of shadow games? Okay. The point of shadow games is back then they were used to kind of weigh weigh a, a person's soul against like whatever whatever ka or ba what was what was like inside of them. So it was to weigh their own soul against the spirit that's inside them, or weigh their own spirit against the soul that's inside of them, and to see which one is the light or the dark, right? And then once the creature is recognized or the evil one is recognized, they would then put them in cards or stone tablets or whatever have you, whatever have you not. You even see the Pokeball in the back, they would encapsulate them in these little like stupid things and put them away. Like they would just put them away because they're evil, they're cast away. And a lot of a lot of we still do this to these days with these haunted items. Items that a priest or whatever are get done with after an exorcism and everything they kind of just put them to the side or lock them up and just be like yo do not touch this this is just like contains pure evil right cool so now da 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 bring it to this century and everything they have been show like bringing back these shadow games into society but slowly very very slowly the first way they did it was children's card games <laughs> how stupid that sounds but children's card games were the first way they introduced this. Were not the first way they introduced this. The first way they kind of got a lot of people back into shadow games, and and uh, board games and all that, like snakes and ladders and all that. These are shadow games. Every single time you play a sh play a game or induct into a shadow game, any type of game, even words, a word like when you're talking to someone, you guys are having a duel. You guys may not know it. But you guys are having a duel. So when someone throws an argument in your way, let's just say you throw them like an attack at them, they have a defense quick for your attack and a counter. So now you you have to counter with their counter with a counter board if they're like what if they can say is better? What if whatever they can get across is better, quicker, faster? That's what a counter is. That's dueling. Hence dueling dueling. The same way that we used to like, people fence and all that with swords. Swords. Because swords is literally the word words, but backwards. You know what I mean? 
So they say if you sharpen up your words, your sword will be stronger. Or they say when you live by the sword, you die by the sword. So if you live only by just your words or just like just if you're just gonna go ham with your words all the time, you're gonna die by those same words. Or if you're gonna like you're gonna die by the weapon you choose to to use. So and that also means like be careful with the words you use because the words you use are also like another way that in this new kind of this new kind of atmosphere that we all gotta get used to living can manifest very, very, very quickly. Can manifest very negative things or very positive things quickly, depending on what your energy signature is and like the intention behind it too. Because if you have a if you have a serious intention behind it, that thing will just be pulled down more faster. Because like I told you, the the dream on is own motion. So the more you feel behind it, the more you pull it down here, manifesting and gain, you give it physical life after that. After that, it's going to start manifesting, finding ways to manifest. You know what I mean? So, let's, um, best way I can explain this to, another, or another way I can explain this to, is you can use these card games to also, like, read a person's heart. Or read, or, or read a person's mind. Because these games are originally used to read, to read someone's, like, soul or spirit. So these days, you can still use these games to still meet someone's soul or spirit. Like, uh, for, for all my people out there who still play Big 2, um, Chinese or Japanese way, or whatever way you guys play, uh, the best way I could say you can get you can get really good at Big 2 is if you learn how to read the cards. If you learn how to read, like, what it means when someone has too much black cards, what it means when someone has too much red, when someone has too much black cards, it just means there's kind of like a kind of like a dark darkness, a little bit of a darkness to them. Like not like a darkness isn't bad, but just there's something staining them. When someone has a has a little bit of red, like there's a, like there's something there's something kind of like bright bright about like something leading in their heart that way. And then after that, when you get into that, you can get into if if it's like a club. Or, yeah, if it's like a club, spade, diamond, or heart, right? So now all these things represent different elements. So, spade, club, diamond, and heart, right? So all these would represent different elements. So some of these might, like, one of these might represent, like, air, water, fire, and earth. And so now when you're actually able to read the cards that are in your hand, you'll be able to be like, okay... So if I have this much, da 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 da, da this is kind of how my like this is like and, and this is actually how you get really good at reading people because if you can read someone's heart, it doesn't matter what they say, it it does not matter what they say because what they say after that is just whatever they want to tell themselves to kind of hide from themselves, to kind of hide from everyone else. But if you know someone in their heart and you know how to read their heart, you will always get that real message and you will know that person. Like you will like not know know that person but you will have a hint at that person because they already showed you that and you're able to go to the original source of it basically their heart you're able to read their heart these games are used to read people's hearts my word like my words that i'm using if you guys can be able to read my heart you guys can be able to read what type of person i am you guys will be able to read where where i'm coming from and just like that, I can be, if I hear you speak and I speak to you, I can hear the same thing where your heart lies, where your mind lies, where your soul lies. Like, you know, quick, like you can, if, if you learn how to read, if you learn how to like read these shadow games, you can skip all the shadow games that people play on you on the daily. Okay, dude, have you ever heard that saying that when you go outside, you got to put your best foot forward? Yeah, well, people are putting their worst foot forward. So <laughs> every single time you're seeing people, you're seeing literally their shadow self. And and like the shadow self, that could be the shadow clone of them. And I have another episode about that, about shadow clones. But if I, I'm going to sum it up quick right here. It could just be like their sudden emotion taking over or their ego taking over or their anger taking over. And them themselves who are how they should be acting is just thrown all the way to the back thrown all the way to the back and now this person is here and then that little time that you get to that they come out you hear you you hear the real them 
you hear what they really got to say to you. You hear everything they got to say, and then back. Every all these masks kind of come back, you know. And how I know that? Because trust me, I do that too. Trust me, we're all human. It's okay. But these things help you if you know how to put down that shadow side of yourself, just to get through with someone. You can do the same thing. Like you can read through people faster. And when you can just read through people, you can avoid paths that are not even meant for you to begin with. Like, if you can read this person's heart from here to now, you can be like, okay, maybe this this friendship here won't be good. Like, it's not going to be long-lasting. It's not going to be the way, it's not gonna go the way that things should go, that we got to end it. Or maybe even this relationship was not going this way, da da da, da I got to end it. Maybe even a family member, maybe it's cool, we're led by blood. But I got to end it. Like, that's just where, where, where it just... Family don't start in blood, but it doesn't end there either. Like, if you guys know, you guys know. If you guys don't, then you guys don't. That's all I can say. Family don't start in blood, but it don't end there either. Trust me. But just remember the importance of energy exchange. Because you're just basically exchanging energies with people when you play these games. So, there's always, there's always in some sense when you're playing these shadow games nowadays, always a loser and a winner. There's always someone who leaves, who needs, who needs their energy to be on top, or needs their energy signature to be above everyone or kind of top. When that doesn't even have to do with anything at all. And these happen. This is going to be happening a lot nowadays too. So let me just hold up. Uh, give me a sec. Let me just put this full screen. Put this again. Okay, okay, okay. I found it. I found it. I found it. I got it. I got it. Okay. This chart here kind of helps a lot with the way people that we kind of like, kind of like how these shadow games play and affect us. Let's just say you got like a your aura is good. It's it's all it's all like good. Your boundaries is all good, right? You're already all Gucci, right? Uh, can you guys see? Yeah, okay, put it right there. Just say your boundaries is all good. You're all good, you're all Gucci, right? Right over here, right over here, right? Then let's just say you get into like let's just say you let's just say you didn't do something at work. Your boss starts giving you heavy, heavy just. Dookie over nothing, right? Just dookie over nothing. This is what's happening in exchange. This is the, you guys see the mouse? This right here is what's happening. The energy exchange that's happening. Let's just say this is you getting yelled at, and this is, him. yeah, this is you, and this is him. You yelling all of that energy into you. And then at the same time, you're going to go be the grounding force for that energy. Or it's either gonna, you're going to ground it in someone else, or you're either just going to keep it compact keep it compact keep it compact right just keep it built in built in built in and then that's when you start let's like that's when you start having it porcupine energy <laughs> that's actually kind of funny that's when you start having porcupine energy. that's actually the most like where it's just anger where it's just every little 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 thing will set you off just, Every little thing just set you off. And then this one is for the people who think not talking at all helps the situation. No, it does not. Not talking is like the same thing as you're like doing like you're just you're just keeping it all in. And then on the other hand, when someone talks to you too much, when someone talks to you too much, this is on the receiving end of the energy you'll be on. You'd be absor absorbing all this energy coming in because someone's trying to voice their opinion to you. But you, you're thinking, no, I'm, I'm going to be quiet. It's going to be okay. No, you're getting hit with all that. Cool. But now later, you're going to be hit, getting hit with this. And this is even worse. Because this, this comes in the form of like, you don't even get to voice it. It's just gonna keep getting you away. Next time you try to do it, it's not even gonna come out correct anything. And then it just keeps 
it's just a backtrack 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 and then we have trust me then we have over here like the overthinkers where is it because this is this is this is this is kind of where i'm at where i'm just kind of like <laughs> where i think too much where was it i think it's I, I think it's this one too i think it's this one i think it's this one maybe but just like if you overthink a lot of situations too you're just kind of just like just you're leaking out energy you're just leaking out you're just leaking out this energy and it may and you may not feel it like a punch you may not feel it like anything but trust me when you try to actually get things done that's supposed to be like your favorite thing to do a whole trust me all that energy leakings is gonna it's gonna start affecting you heavy and even when you get back into these things there's gonna be a lot of things holding you back because now like to be honest a lot of people don't see it but the people around them are playing mad shadow games people the pe people who play the most people who play the people who play the most shadow games on us are the ones around us 24 7. Probably the one, probably the only person you can legitimately know who does not play shadow games with you because you see their shadow themselves and their shadow and themselves and their shadow is the one you're at, your significant other. If you're around them like 24 7 or like if you're dating, if you're doing all that a lot because you actually see when their shadow comes up, when they're like, when their skill, like insecurity, everything comes up and you help them then do, you, you help mend their shadow and they come through and everything. You're able to see those, you know what I mean? Everyone else kind of has a perception of where they think that. And even even, even the relationship for even parents, because parents even do that. Parents even do that. And, and and you can also say friends. Friends friends and family do that. But to an, ex to an extent, everyone is giving you this kind of like half-ass shadow. <laughs> half-assed shadow like half-assed shadow games thing like you know they're still trying to throw you off everybody still wants to throw you off somehow some way they don't want you on your eight like and don't you you don't have to take this all personal i'm not, i don't take this all personal but just know that if you do go out there into the world and you kind of see the internet or kind of see people do things on the street or let certain things kind of touch you in the heart this is just shadow games because it starts playing on those insecurities or the shadows of yourself you know it's like playing on these little little things that kind of hurt you you know what i mean like like basically like um you see all these help gurus online and everything like help gurus are help gurus of course and i'm kind of kind of doing kind of the same thing but a lot of help gurus actually try to like keep you in your shadow and not try to break you out of it try to keep you in that cycle and try to just keep you coming back keep you coming back and, to, and then eventually it'll make you buy a product and all that and everything like there's always a game to this that's why it's called shadow games like it's a game to it some people just want to actually help you break the cycle because you can actually like imagine building an empire I and mean, helping others set up their empire and then that bigger empire is the thing that's going to be like you taking over together like doing things faster bigger like because it's faster alone but further to get like further together trust me it's faster alone but further way further together but yeah so like like i explained how just getting into like any little mystery game or anything these are kind of little shadow games we do too but um even online even reacting to videos and everything these are kind of shadow games because people are looking to pull a certain reaction out of you or a certain thing out of you but in turn why in turn what because sometimes these things be planting that it'll be planting very negative ideas and thoughts thought forms in our head that we'll be connecting to later and that later will be causing us more more mental damage or more spiritual damage than we're actually thinking and like i said at the beginning of the video we no longer live in a 3d world we still live in a 3d world and i still got all this but we live in a more spiritual world you could all feel it like you could actually feel it like people are getting like i wouldn't say powers but people are getting ability, the ability like, to read people the ability of patience the ability of like to move on no matter how crappy things may be the ability to get up and 
go train every morning. A lot of people think this is like, and it is hard work ethic and everything, but some, some people will never ever understand these things. So some people will never ever get to your position to where you'll just keep getting to having the worst day of your life, but you'll find, you'll find that light in it and keep going. you always keep going. Some people will never understand it. That right there is like an ability, you know, your ability is saying your ability to, I'm not able to voice, I'm not able to voice, uh, put my, use my voice out there for music. I'm only able to use it for talking for the moment, for like acting and stuff for the moment. Some of you guys have the ability to sing. Some of you guys have the ability to rap amazingly, amazingly. I mean, amazingly. I mean, the owl would actually, the stories you guys would actually, the, the lives you guys would change, the stories. You guys is art. See, a lot of you guys into art, even like art in any form of music, anything, painting, anything. All these things can kind of, it's in a self-expression. It's an expression of your ability. A lot of people may not have your ability. You may meet people who have the same ability as you. That's the whole point of this, is to kind of gather and kind of work on it. Hone your ability. Train through it. Get ready for whatever's coming, like, for after. Because there's, there's clearly more to this journey than just this life. Everyone knows that. Some people may not want to believe it, and that's okay. That's their right. That's that, that's their choice. Free will, remember? And if you don't believe in free will, then like you're kind of executing it. But that's that's for another day. But still, you know what I mean. Everyone has their choice, so we all know there's more to this and everything. So why not do everything you like? You got to do here where you're here. Execute your abilities that you can't execute. Find the abilities that you never knew you even had. You know what I mean? For real. You might not even know you're a writer, singer, actor, whatever, whatever, whatever. Find it. Boom. That's it. That's your mission. That's the way you can do what you gotta do and help this help along with this battle. Like, you know, help along with this song. This ongoing spiritual war, because it is an ongoing spiritual war, and I know all of us kind of feel it in some sense, where it's like maybe good versus bad in our subjective eyes, but to other entities, it just is what it is, absolutely, but to us, it's different, right? So you can do your part about this war, even being human, 3D, being, <laughs> being stuck in a body, you know? We can still do our part. And the way you can tell we can still do our part because this part is just used to control. Like, you know, it's like the first person perspective. The first person perspective we're seeing from, there has to be another person. Like, there has to be something else inside because the way is just weird. It's like it's listening. You know what I mean? Your body's listening to you, reacting to you. Like, you know, when you can feel, you feel things to such, like, to such levels that, like, from the from within too and not even show it physically outside so i tell you there's more like we're getting this world is more spiritual now than it's it's getting to be more spiritual now than i think ever to be honest like i think back then there was a like it was like the beginning ages of it opening up cracking that book open but now we're actually going through, we went through the mess but we're transitioning into the golden age. So the golden age should be a really, really different. It's kind of golden because, you know, <laughs> your soul, your soul is golden. Your soul doesn't want to, like, it, 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 it's not no second place, <laughs> you know? So, end of the episode, more of the episode. Watch all the shadow games everyone plays. Watch all the shadow games you play because you may, by accident, push someone away that you don't even want to push away. That person may be the realest person you ever met in your life. But since your shadow games are just shadow games, like doing this thing, gone. So now, like, that's old. That's just how things go. You know what I mean? And trust me, I've been there where I've lost some real people because I just, like, um, the way things go, you know? And I'm, I'm like, legitimate. You gotta be okay with it, too. There, there, there's no point in making a mistake and not being okay with it. You gotta at least stand behind it. Stand behind what you did. Like, 
So stand behind it. Stop playing these shadow games. Stop shifting the blame. Be there with your data. Accountability. That's basically what the, kind of the moral of the story is. Accountability. Because shadow games just means you're accountable for your actions. And there's no need for you to get in these games with using your shadow all the time. Because there's no need to use your shadow all the time. Like, you don't need it no more. Because now you're just using your soul just to shine. Just to do its work. Yeah. Just does its thing. Because then you can go other forms of outlets to fake it to make it. Yeah. Well, catch you guys on the next episode. Have a good night. In the Shinobi world, it's not how you live, it's how you die. A Shinobi's life is not measured by how they live, but rather it's measured by what they managed to accomplish before their death. And looking back, my life has really been full of nothing but failure. Continually rejected by Tsunade. Unable to stop my friend. And unable to protect either my student or my mentor. Compared to the great and celebrated deeds of the Hokage, my actions are trifling, insignificant things indeed. I wish that I could have died like each of the Hokage. The tale is only as good as its final turn of events. The plot twist. And mistakes are an important part of the plot too. I've lived my life always believing that the lessons I learned are what honed me. I swore I'd accomplish a deed so great that it would obliterate all my failures. I die a splendid shinobi. At least that's how it was supposed to go. <laughs> but this, my plot twist, my tale ending like this. The great Lord Elder prophesied that I would be the one to guide a revolution. A person who will make a great choice that will bring either peace or destruction to the world of the shinobi. I thought I would defeat pain, stop the Akatsuki, and save the world from destruction. But in the end, I failed that too. How pitiful. How sad that this will be the ending twist to the tale of Jiraiya the Gallant. What a worthless story it turned out to be. Never going back on your word, no matter what. And never giving up despite what the odds may tell you to do. Naruto, if that is truly your ninja way, then as your teacher, I have no business at all whining. Because as everyone knows, a student inherits his ninja way from his teacher. Right, Naruto? The tale of Jiraiya the Gallant. Well, now it'll end a bit better, I hope. The final chapter. I'll call it Frog at the Bottom of the Well drifts off into the great ocean. <laughs> Just barely glorious, but glorious indeed. Now, I suppose it's about time I put down my pen. Oh, that's right. What should I name the sequel? I wonder. Let's see. The Tale of Naruto Uzumaki. <laughs> yes. That has a nice ring to it.